This video describes the construction of multivariate statistical tolerance limits. They're new in StatGraphics 18. Statistical tolerance limits are used to make a statement about p percent of a population at a c percent confidence level. For example, a 95-99 tolerance interval specifies a range of values that contains 99% of the population with 95% confidence. In process capability analyses, tolerance limits are often compared to specifications for the process. If the tolerance limits lie completely within the spec limits, there is a high level of confidence that at least p percent of the items or actions created by the process will be in spec. For a single variable that follows a normal distribution, we can use the mean and standard deviation of a random sample of n observations to create the tolerance interval. The equation for the statistical tolerance interval is x bar the sample mean plus and minus k times s the sample standard deviation. The factor k depends on p, c, and n. With multivariate data, the situation is more complicated. Although we could construct tolerance limits separately for each of the variables, that would yield an incomplete statement about the process, particularly when the variables are highly correlated. You can see here a data sheet containing measurements of the diameter and strength of 200 medical devices. The specification for the diameter is 2.0 plus and minus 0.1. The specification for strength is that it should be 200 or greater. Here I've created an XY scatter plot for the 200 bivariate observations. You'll notice that all the observations are within the spec, which is defined by this rectangular region. You'll also notice that there's a strong positive correlation between the two variables. It's in excess of 0 0.9. This slide shows a bivariate histogram for that same data. You'll notice a fairly well-defined peak near the center of the observations. You also notice that the distribution looks reasonably symmetric. In order to calculate multivariate statistical tolerance limits, we'll assume that our data come from a multivariate normal distribution. A multivariate normal distribution describes the joint distribution of m random variables. There are two different ways to parameterize a multivariate normal distribution. First, we could specify a vector of m means and an m by m covariance matrix. Alternatively, we could specify a vector of m means, a vector of m standard deviations, and an m by m correlation matrix. The multivariate normal distribution has one very interesting property. Any linear combination of the m variables has a univariate normal distribution. This includes each variable by itself as well as combinations of all the variables. You see here a bivariate normal distribution fit to the data on diameter and strength. It has a well-defined peak in the center of the distribution and tails off symmetrically in all directions. I'm going to talk about two methods for estimating tolerance regions given data from a multivariate normal distribution. The first method calculates tolerance limits for each variable separately, setting the confidence level for each of the variables to 100 times m minus 1 plus c divided by m. For example, if m equals 2, 
The individual tolerance intervals are calculated using a confidence level of 97.5%. This is a Bonferroni type of an approach. With two variables, we'd set the individual confidence levels for each tolerance limit to 97.5%. Although each of the limits might be incorrect 2.5% of the time, together they'd bound at least p% percent of the multivariate population with at least 95% confidence. This is a conservative approach because taken together the tolerance limits may contain more than p percent of the multivariate population. The second method creates an exact elliptical tolerance region using the equation shown here. X is a multivariate observation. X bar is a vector of m sample means and S is the m by m covariance matrix. The tolerance region consists of all values of x that are less than or equal to some constant c. While we know that the constant depends on p, c, m, and n, there's no theoretical way to derive its value. Therefore, we need to resort to Monte Carlo simulation. Returning to our example, I've loaded diameter and strength into the Stack Graphics 18 data sheet. Before I calculate the multivariate tolerance limits, I'm going to run a multivariate normality test. This test tests the null hypothesis that the variables I'm working with come from a multivariate normal distribution. The best test for that is something called Royston's H statistic. If the p-value associated with Royston's H is greater than 0.05, then I would not reject the hypothesis that my data came from a multivariate normal distribution. In this case, the value for p is about 0.7, suggesting that diameter and strength may reasonably be considered to have come from a multivariate normal distribution. In order to calculate the tolerance limits, I've loaded my data into the Stack Graphics 18 data book. I'll now go to the top menu to describe numeric data, statistical tolerance limits, and select multivariate tolerance limits. On the data input dialog box, I'll put the names of the columns containing my data. When I press OK, the analysis options dialog box will be displayed. The next thing I need to do is tell the program which of the variables should have a two-sided tolerance interval, which require a lower bound only, and which require an upper bound only. In this case, the specification for diameter is two-sided, so I'll ask for a two-sided tolerance interval. On the other hand, the specification for strength has a lower bound only, so I'll move it to this field. I also need to specify the level of confidence C, which by default is set to 95%, and the proportion of the population that I wish to bound by my tolerance limits, which by default is set to 99%. I'll take those defaults and press OK. On the Tables and Graphs button, I can select between two tables and two graphs, Again, I'll take the defaults and press OK. At this point, it will start the Monte Carlo simulation to figure out the value of C. And when that's done, it will display an analysis window. Let's take a look at the analysis summary first. 
The most important results are in this section of the analysis. You see first the 95% Bonferroni tolerance limits for 99% of the population. These are the limits that were estimated using what I called method one. The tolerance interval for diameter runs from about 1.94 to 2.06. That's well within the specification limits which ranged from 1.9 to 2.1. Likewise, the lower tolerance bound for strength is about 221.9, well above the specification limit of 200. You'll also see a note that there was one observation out of my 200 sample medical devices that was outside these Bonferroni limits. However, since the Bonferroni limits are completely within the specification, I can be 95% certain that at least 99% of my population from which the data came is within spec. You'll see down here some information about the elliptical tolerance region that was calculated using method 2. In particular, the Monte Carlo simulation determined that the appropriate value of the constant was 10.664. We can see both tolerance regions by looking at the graph I requested. On this graph, the open-ended rectangular region shown in red is the limits defined by the Bonferroni method one. If you look very closely, you'll see that there is one observation that's below the lower tolerance limit for strength. On the other hand, the elliptical tolerance region contains all 200 of my observations. There are a couple important things to notice here. First, if you look at the area covered by the elliptical tolerance re region, it's considerably less than that of the rectangular tolerance region. Secondly, there are values of diameter and strength that are within one region and not within the other. Particularly serious might be a point approximately here. That would be a very, very unusual point with respect to my 200 samples. On the other hand, it would be well within the Bonferroni limits. There's one additional plot I want to show you based on something called the generalized distances. It turns out that a multivariate observation x sub i will be within the elliptical tolerance region if the squared generalized distance from the centroid defined here as di squared is less than or equal to c. These generalized distances are a good way of detecting unusual observations. Returning now to Stack Graphics 18, I'll go up to the list of tables and graphs on the analysis toolbar and ask for a distance plot. This will plot those squared generalized distances. Notice that in this case they're all less than C, which turned out to be 10.664. If there were unusual observations, you can always put your left mouse down and determine what row they are in the file. In this case, the one farthest from the centroid is row 126. If you'd like to read more about multivariate statistical tolerance limits, they're covered in Chapter 7 of my book, Process Capability Analysis, Estimating Quality, published by CRC Press.